Kia ora, good evening. There was further protest today in the city over changes to employment law that union officials believe could disadvantage workers. Union South and convener Anna Huffstutler says today's action is part of a larger nationwide awareness campaign to educate workers on the proposed changes to legislation. These events have been organised all around New Zealand in protest of their proposed changes to the Employment Relations Act. So, um, what in particular worries you? Um, for my members, um, who are the Service and Food Worker members, the changes to the Vulnerable Workers Clause Section 6A, where, um, which protects a lot of cleaners and kitchen staff. At the moment, currently, if an incoming contractor comes in, they get to retain their, their wages, their terms and conditions and their jobs. The National Government are looking at scrapping that clause, which could effectively mean that a new, a new contractor could come in and, and fire all those vulnerable workers. And how much support have you had down here in the south? Um, so far I think we've had quite a bit of support. We had Helen Kelly down last week talking to um, the PPTA. All the unions have been informed and you know are, are realising that this, this legislation could be really damaging for workers, not just union members but workers in general. And what other actions planned, if any, after this? Um, because we're coming to the end of the year, we'll probably be organising more things next year, so there could possibly be more stop work, work meetings, more protests. Um, there'll be a lot, of thing, a lot of information going out to our work sites and our members. And we will at some stage be going to visit our local MP here at Boy. Today is International Day of the Volunteer, the day that offers an opportunity for organisations and individual volunteers to make visible their contributions. Volunteers offer invaluable support to organisations that would otherwise struggle to effectively fulfil the roles they do within the community. Hospice South and Promotions Officer Renee Goldup says the hospice and store use volunteers on a daily basis and are always looking for more individuals keen to donate their time and skills to the organisation. A 2008 study of the New Zealand non-profit sector estimated that volunteers make up 67% of the non-profit workforce, equal to almost 144,000 full-time positions, representing 6.4% of the economically active population. Newly appointed chair of the Inner City Steering Committee, Councillor Graham Sycamore, is positive about the way ahead for the Inner City upgrade. Councillor Sycamore says it's important to make a start on one of the 12 precincts highlighted in Cray Pocock's master plan. He'll also be asking the ILT to confirm which Inner City location is preferred for a new hotel development. Hunter Andrews asked the councillor whether he was an Inner City user himself. Yes, like most citizens in Invercargill, I come to the city for uh, most of my shopping and uh, no specific uh, singular part of the, of the CBD, but uh, go around all of it, really. Do you feel like a brave man taking this role on? Well, I don't know I had much choice, really. Uh, under these new uh, Local Government Act where the Mayor has these powers, he says, you're doing, you're doing this and uh, it's do it or be shot. <laughs> <laughs> He's obviously backing your skills, though, to get this done. Well, I suppose he must uh, have thought I had some ability to uh, get it moving again. It was well established by Norman Elder. He's got a, a very good uh, committee there of uh, local business people and uh, some of whom I already know and some I've yet to meet and in the new year we'll get together and uh, talk about the next step. It seems the major problem was consultation or what critics say lack of it. Will, will we see an opening of that consultation process again? Well, I, there will be further consultation because the committee originally had a, had a delegation to provide a concept plan to the council and there was a fair amount of consultation taken on what people wanted and where they wanted it, uh, particularly about where they felt safe and where they didn't. And then the plan was drawn up by Craig Pocock Design uh, based on that information. Now, yes, when the final plan that's been presented hasn't been consulted on but it contains a lot of options uh, right through it and uh, it's once we get to sorting out which option we're going to go with then we'll be consulting with the affected parties about what do you think about this and what's your preference. It's obviously very late in the year, we can expect nothing this year, but next year people just seem to be saying let's get something done. Yes, well we've got to get started and Council's uh, allocated some funding in this this current year's budget to get started. Um, there are about 12 different uh, 
concept areas. It's a matter of uh, sorting out which is perhaps low-hanging fruit, if you like, and make a positive start on one. And, and I would like to think maybe we could start somewhere in the middle, like maybe Esk Street or... Uh, because one of the problems we've got is we don't know yet where this new hotel's going to be. And I believe that it's going to be an anchor building in the CBD, and hopefully in the CBD uh, at some time in the future. So we'd sort of like to establish something uh, from the ILT about what their plans are with that before we go too far. And you'll, you'll be uh, asking that question, putting that question to them? Yes, we certainly will. Uh, hopefully uh, we might be able to have a discussion with them before Christmas. Not expecting any answer, of course, uh, in the short term, but I think uh, we need to make them aware of the fact how crucial that location is. I'm not so concerned about the timing. It's a matter of nailing down where it's going to be and then it gives us a base to work around it. A quick word about South Invercargill. Car parks once again have reared their ugly head as, as, a, as quite a big issue really. Do you think things will progress in South Invercargill? I think so. I, I believe South Alive are doing a fantastic job. Uh, it's car parks and pocket parks seems to be the issue there. And uh, I think they made a wise decision to, to recommend we do the small pocket park on Alice Road first and then uh, have another look at the Martin Street area because that appears to be the problem down there. Stay with us, it's all happening in the city. A street party on Saturday and a free concert in Queen's Park on Sunday. Welcome back. A brand new initiative to reward those studying trades at Invercargill's Southern Institute of Technology kicked off last night. The Invercargill Licensing Trust initiative came about after recognised those studying trades were missing out on scholarship opportunities. The ILT and SIT worked together to create the trade scholarships to recognise their efforts and to show their value. Successful applicants receive $1,000 at the end of their course to go towards tools and equipment. The trade scholarships total $65,000, taking the Trust's scholarships donations to around half a million dollars annually. General Manager of the ILT, Greg Mulvey, says the response and uptake has been excellent and trade and scholarship funding has already been approved for next year. Bringing Esk Street back to its former shopping glory is Invercargill man Mike Sanford's mission. He's organising the Esk Street Christmas Market Day this Saturday in a bid to refocus business and fun to the city's main shopping arena. Initially I got the idea from the Windsor Bonanza Day they had out at Windsor. The place was busy, packed and, and just fun and I thought we need to do something like this in town. Why do we need this in Invercargill? Well, I think uh, East Street sort of has been neglected, or the CBD's been a bit neglected the last while, and it's a chance of uniting everybody, the, the retailers in the street, and, and putting it out there that, hey, we have still have some great shops in town. So what can people expect if they come along on Saturday? Uh, we've got a number of the retailers uh, putting uh, tables out with specials and clearance stock and bargains. Um, we'll have a sausage sizzle, and we've also got a special guest, uh, Santa. So how did it come about that you've managed to pull the whole of East Street together on your own here? Uh, well, I've had some uh, certainly good support from the local retailers and, and other businesses in town. Um, and it's, I guess, it's a bit of determination and passion to make it happen. Do you think that you're not, the fact that you're not involved in, in council or any other aspect is, is given some neutrality to it? I think that's probably what has benefited, is that um, I'm a neutral outsider who's come in with an idea and embrace, and, and, and the, the, the retailers and, and the businesses have embraced it. And I think that's probably worked, is that I'm sort of neutral, so there's um, no conflict of interest. So what's driving you to do this? Uh, well, it's, about, it's a way of launching my website, What's On Invis, which is a one-stop shop for what's on in town. And I guess, you know, it's a how do you get it out there? And I thought, well, why not create an event? And it's a win-win for everybody, uh, for my website and also for the businesses in town. And potentially give something to build on in the future? Oh, totally. Look, this year, is a, it's happened so fast that it's a, it's a platform that next year we can build and make it bigger and brighter. And the fun and games are scheduled to start in Esk Street between 10 and 3 on Saturday. The Southern District Health Board are financially better off thanks to the fundraising efforts of Countdown. The Countdown Kids Hospital Appeal handed over a cheque to the SDHB today for $72,926, the local donation of a mammoth nationwide fundraising campaign. Ten hospitals around the country benefited today from fundraising efforts with local Countdown team members and volunteers making cheese rolls and running car boot sales, among other things, to raise funds. 
The Countdown Kids Appeal runs for three months each year and has raised almost $7 million since 2007, which has been used for medical and activity items in children's wards. And extensive lineup of musicians have donated their time for a free concert this set Sunday in Queen's Park to raise funds for the typhoon ravaged Philippines. Organisers have timetabled the fundraiser to include two periods and two venues, afternoon from 1pm in Queen's Park and an evening gig at Players Entertainment from 7pm which will be the wet weather venue from 4pm if needed. Hunter Andrews spoke to event organiser Southland Entertainer of the Year Alice Fraser and and singer-songwriter Liv McBride. It's quite overwhelming seeing the, the people that are coming together for this. We've had so many musicians wanting to give of their time and um, efforts. And, it's um, the who's who of the music business down here, isn't it? Really? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, so we're still really just putting the word out there to, to get sponsorship and um, even get a bigger team on board um, of, of all sorts of people, really. Um, but it's, it's in those last hours, as you, as you well know, that, that things come together and um, it's going to be a great day. The forecast looks alright for Sunday. You'll be expecting a big crowd here at the Rotunda. Yes, it's going to be a sunny day. Um, if not, um, we've got a wet weather venue planned at 4pm from Players and um, they've willingly given their venue as well as a nighttime venue. So both venues are going to be awesome. The first venue, um, being the park, will be very much um, a mixture of solo artists, duos and bands, kids and cultural groups um, and it's really really um, uh, focused on families as well and it's going to be an awesome day. Night time will be more the band feel at Players from 7 um, so yeah we're just looking to really get behind this. There's not much that as a musician you can do, you know musicians, especially original artists, we're always broke so it's hard to give money but we can give our time so so that's that's what we're doing. And you have a rather personal connection with the situation in the Philippines don't you? Yeah so my dad and stepmom run an orphanage in Sorsagon City and luckily my dad was in New Zealand at the time, um, my stepmother was in Sorsagon so it was just out of the out of the path of destruction um, but their house mum, Vicky, was um, in Tuckleban and so they were, they were about 20 minutes away from, um, from being right in the, middle of the, uh, in the middle of the path of the storm. And so the, yeah. the thing that people don't seem to, to understand um, is that what's going on still now is still really relevant. So that's, that's why the concert now is a really important thing because, you know, it's not, it's slipping away from the media, you know, the Philippines, it's, you know, everybody's, Everybody's sort of moving on. on to different different things and, and people in the Philippines are still struggling. Um, in Tacloban, um, prisoners were let out of the prisons and or they escaped. And so rape and murder and, um, and some really nasty stuff is happening over there and there's still so many kids who need help. There are so many families who are displaced. And so if we can send over 100 bucks that they didn't have beforehand, then, then that's, that's amazing. And that's it from the news team. Sport is up next. Have a pleasant evening in the sun out there. Good night.